Hi Pastor John, hi New Life Church. I'm so excited to be here with you. My name is uh, Corey Bowder. I am a Teen Challenge alumni. I'm so um, excited to see you guys have a partnership with that ministry. It's a ministry that has changed my life forever. Um, I'll talk a little bit about my experiences there. Uh, but first, I want to say I, I graduated from Teen Challenge in Western Michigan, and that is in Muskegon. Um, and that ministry is a one-year live-in discipleship program. And so we say uh, Teen Challenge, well, there actually was a lot of adults there too. So, And it ranged from anywhere from 17 to, I mean, we had... 60, 70 year old men there getting set free from, by Jesus. So um, there really is no age limit. Um, so I graduated and I'm going to tell a little bit about how I got there. So Teen Challenge is a ministry um, that is for people with life controlling problems. So they have a at the time about an 86 percent success rate those that have completed the program um, and what pastor phil mclean says all the time who is the director there to god be the glory because that ministry it literally they they pump the word of the lord to you for a whole year um, so i'll back up and say how i got there so my life controlling problem was alcohol. So when I grew up in high school, I let alcohol consume my life. I started to um, be what I was not to try to um, fit in uh, with the wrong people. Um, I just let sin completely take over. Um, eventually my alcohol problem got to the point where I couldn't stop so I uh, had a couple of um, uh, minor in possessions an MIP charge because I was under 21 and then I ended up getting at you know I had about three of those and then I ended up getting a drunk driving charge and it just kind of progressively got worse you know that's kind of how sin will just take you where you don't want to go. So what happened was um, after those charges um, I ended up um, continuing after my my drunk driving charge I didn't stop drinking I continued to drink and drive um, I ended up doing some um, pretty crazy things I, I stole a bunch of cars with some friends of mine um, and when I got caught that time I was looking at some serious prison time um, that got my attention so I finally was to the point where I was broken and knew that if I wasn't if if, if I wasn't gonna change my ways I was either gonna die or be in prison um, and so that really it, it it made me ready to receive from the Lord finally after he was trying to to get my attention all these years before so I actually heard about the ministry of Teen Challenge um, in our county jail here in Ottawa County and I was um, still awaiting my my sentencing so I was kind of not sure how long I was going to be in jail, if I was going to prison, how long I was going to be in prison. I just didn't know any of those things. I was kind of at the mercy of our justice system. And so um, my mother actually heard of the ministry, Teen Challenge, from a friend of hers. And she had brought it up. Um, and what? And one thing that I didn't know was Teen Challenge is sometimes considered as an alternative um, to jail in some cases um, and I was kind of excited to hear about that um, people have gotten sentenced to Teen Challenge um, as part of their punishment um, 
And so I pursued that um, while I was going through my, uh, my charges. So I told my lawyer that I wanted to be released to Teen Challenge. Um, and what I saw through my sentencing, I actually had to go through two different counties and both of the judges agreed for this to happen, to send me to Teen Challenge, um, which I saw God literally change the heart of a judge in a courtroom to make this happen. Um, you know, potentially looking at 15 years, all of a sudden I'm going to a year Christian discipleship program. I was ecstatic. I was so excited. Um, so when I got there, I, I, I spent about eight months in jail. I got to Teen Challenge directly from county jail. Had a pastor <laughs> pick me up. Um, pastor uh, Dave, he thought he was the janitor. He was wearing a t-shirt and jeans. I'll never forget it. Just looked like a humble man. And um, <laughs> come to find out, he's one of the pastors there. Um, but... I remember something about that ministry was I actually seen the Christian life walked out in those men, um, those men and women. So I have grew up in church my whole life um, and I didn't really know if God was real or not. And one thing that I I found out in jail actually when I was so broken I didn't know what was going to happen I cried out to God and I said God if you're real I can't do this on my own I need you to I need you to change I I need to change and I don't know if you're real but I need your help I said it just like that and I literally felt holy spirit come in me and I felt him reaffirmed that he was real, he cared about me, and he was ready to change me. And so that's, at that moment, I was open to the Lord. And when Teen Challenge became available in the court system, that's where I went. And so that is what got me in the doors. Now the ministry itself, let me tell you, they call it a Bible boot camp because you eat, sleep, and live the Word of the Lord. I mean, we have chapel in the morning, we have uh, work duties in the afternoon, we have um, prayer time, we have Bible studies, and um, every day. It, it, it was your job. Um, so, they had a, they had the ministry that I went to, they had a broke out in lower growth and upper growth. So the first three months was considered lower growth. They, they teach you a lot of fundamentals. Um, and what they say is most people will leave after the first 30 days because one of the things about um, where I attended was there was a lot of rules. And coming from the jail where I had no freedom at all I felt like the rules were more than reasonable. I had already so much more freedom than what I was used to. Um, but it was a place of rules. Um, it was a place of order. It was a place of stewardship. You know, this is a ministry. They don't, they don't get funded by um, government or, you know, it, they, they, it's donation based. Um, so it was a very, um, it was a very structured environment. And I loved every minute of it. So, so lower growth, and then upper growth was more of the Bible study period where they go through um, Christian family. Um, they go through uh, a lot, a little more deeper of the word of um, sin, Satan, and evil thoughts. You know, they kind of they 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 showed you your identity in Christ. Um, and one of the things that I learned there was 
you know, I, I had a lot of sin in my life. And the greater the sin in your heart, the greater the grace. Um, and so, as I'm being fed and taught the Bible, I'm being delivered and set free in the chapel. So it's a complete transformation, and it's it's a it's a place that is completely dedicated to your walk and relationship with the Lord, and you're completely surrounded by like-minded people. Um, I felt like a I felt like a kid, and I was twenty, you know, twenty-one. So so excited. It 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 is one of the most best memories that I have in my young adult life. So, um, I'm going to go over uh, some of the questions that I got from uh, Pastor John here. Who do you feel could benefit most from attending the program? The Ministry of Teen Challenge, they, they focus on if you have a life controlling problem. Now I've seen a lot of guys go there from problems with drugs, um, problems with alcohol. Um, those are probably the most common. Um, now not to say that it couldn't be more things, but people that go to that ministry, they are usually pretty broken people. I mean, to give up a year of your life and completely walk away from, I mean, you cannot leave. You cannot leave and come back. It is a live-in program. Um, you know, you don't have a job. You're literally just there for a year. Uh, so it's a sacrifice. So people that go there, they usually are homeless. Um, they usually have broken every bridge already. Uh, that is usually their last chance. That's like a last chance ministry. Um, and you just see people getting restored, families getting restored, relationships getting built again. Because um, that is what God des desires of us. If someone is listening to your message today that is struggling with a life-controlling issue, what do you want to tell them? So, um, if you have something in your life that is controlling you, um, it's dominating your thoughts, um, I know what that feels like. So, alcohol was, it, it, I was a slave to it. Um, I didn't want to do it, but I, I did, you know, so it, it was something that I felt like I couldn't control. If you, if, if I, if I knew someone that had that same life controlling issue or, or, or any life controlling issue, I would just want to tell them that there's hope, that they don't have to stay that way and to stop trying to do it on your own. Reach out to someone, reach out to Pastor John, reach out to a good minister or a good uh, church nearby. You know, Teen Challenge is a big commitment, but I tell you what, um, I've, I've, I've known people that have tried to kick alcohol through AA classes, as an example, and it takes years to get a revelation of deliverance from the Lord. You know, and, and sometimes it just takes, you know, a ministry to bring up, you know, to, to call that out of you to get delivered, you know, at, you know, one, sometimes, you know, 30 seconds with the Lord is better than, than 30 months of counseling, you know. Just get 
get a just know that you can be free and you don't have to be in bondage anymore um, and it's not always something that happens overnight but just have that resolve to press on um, have that willingness to find. what is your epilogue your legacy what would they say about you and what pictures would they show during the credits after the movie inspired by the true events of your life and recovery you know I one of the things that amaze me to this day is what I envisioned my life to be in high school um, so my plan after high school was to join the, the Marines so I had enlisted um, was accepted and was on my way to boot camp to join the Marines and before I left Lansing um, they had pulled me into an office there after my physical and they said um, Mr. Bowder we see that there is a a uh, minor in possession charge that we did not know about. Um, we're going to have to let you go back home while we process this in our records and send you back. So um, I was pretty disappointed. I had a big goodbye party the night before. Um, <laughs> and here I was going back home. That uh, was a little embarrassing. Um, and I had already told them everything I had. So I was already transparent with them. So I was kind of annoyed. So when I got home, that's when I started to spiral down with my alcoholism and stealing cars and after that the the door was shut to Marines forever um, so I often wonder uh, what my life would have been like if I would have had it the way that I planned well God had other plans for me and I, I thank the Lord that he used the tools that he used to get up to get my attention my legacy is definitely my kids so um, my wife and I Mindy we have seven kids and it is my 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 heart's desire to raise them up to know the Lord to know that he's real not question it when they're older to give them opportunity to experience the Lord, to challenge them, to pursue the Lord, um, because that is what will remain after I'm gone. My legacy will be um, my children. Um, and one of the things that I always wished I had was that opportunity, that, that knowing, knowing that I know that God is real. I feel like I didn't have that when I was a kid. And I think if I would have known that, I may have made different choices in my teenage and young adult years. Yeah, I just want to share thank you uh, to Pastor John and my church family in Washington there. Thank you again for this opportunity. Um, I'm so excited to see your commitment to that ministry because it really does change lives. Um, one thing that I remember um, when I was almost completed, when I before I right before I completed the ministry, I was getting a little nervous to leave um, because I knew that I tried stop drinking and all this stuff before and couldn't. So I was a little nervous to be on my own and trying life again on my own. Um, I remember bowling. We had a day pass off with my family, so we went bowling. And I remember just pondering that I'm going to be on my own. What, what's going to happen? Um, I don't want to go back to where I came from. And I remember just opening up to this man that was bowling next to me about it. And he ended up being a pastor. And he's like, you know, Mr. Corey, I happen to know Teen Challenge. And I know that the God that wrote the Bible that you read in Teen Challenge is the same God that wrote that Bible to be used out of Teen Challenge, you know. And so, <laughs> very graciously, that man said, the word that saved you is the word that will sustain you outside of those four walls. So, um, God bless you all. Um, I don't know you, but I love you. <laughs>